Hi, I am Ajit Virkud, Professor of Obstetrics and Gynecology from Mumbai. Hello citizens of the internet. In this long awaited part 2, I am going to discuss the diagnosis and management of intrauterine growth restriction. Please watch part 1 before watching this one. Wait a minute. Retrospectively speaking, I have realized that I have so many fundamental things to talk about the topic that I will need three parts. In the third part, I will talk about multi-vessel Doppler study and management of IUGR. I am going to discuss the diagnosis of IUGR under three headings, suspicion, screening and establishing the diagnosis using ultrasonography and Doppler. Prenatal screening of the general obstetric population based on identifying the risk factors for IUGR is important. One should look for IUGR in patients with a history of following conditions listed here. I am not going to enumerate all of them except to say that smoking is an important preventable factor and that previous history of SGA or IUGR fetus is one of the most important predictive factors for subsequent IUGR. Gravidogram that is serial measurement and plotting of symphysiofundal height versus gestational age in weeks is a simple, inexpensive and sensitive screening test for detection of IUGR. Its routine use cannot be overemphasized. As an approximation, symphysiofundal height increases by about 1 cm per week between 14 and 32 weeks. A lag of 4 cm of more certainly suggests growth restriction and should be subjected to ultrasonography to establish the diagnosis. Ideally, normal growth charts should be constructed for Indian and other populations as these parameters are population specific. A gravidogram must be derived for the 10th, 50th and 90th centiles. Serial symphysiofundal height measurements are reported to be have 75% accuracy in detecting small for date infants. Another clinical parameter for screening is abdominal girth at the umbilicus taken in inches. Abdominal girth increases by 1 inch per week after 30 weeks. It is 30 inches at 30 weeks in an averagely built woman. IUGR should also be suspected if maternal weight is inadequate or is decreasing. Reliable diagnosis of IUGR is heavily dependent on accurate dating in early pregnancy. Calculation of EDD from last normal menstrual period is highly inaccurate, whereas sonographic evaluation at 8 to 13 weeks, that is CRL measurement, is the most accurate method of establishing gestational age. A common mistake is to change the EDD based on later third trimester ultrasound scan. Remember, once EDD has been documented based on the above true criteria, that is a reliable LMP and early scan, it should never be changed. Doing so can result in failure to recognize IUGR. Remember, definitive diagnosis can only be made after delivery when the weight of baby and gestational age are known. Serial ultrasonography at 2-3 to three weeks interval is the most useful tool for diagnosis of IUGR. Ultrasonography criteria for diagnosis are shown here. Abdominal circumference and expected fetal weight are the most accurate ultrasound parameters for diagnosis of IUGR. Whereas femur length and abdominal circumference ratio and placental grade 3 have the lowest positive predictive value. Please note, each measured diameter has an error potential of about 1 week up to 20 gestational weeks, about 2 weeks from 20 to 36 weeks of gestation and about 3 weeks 
thereafter. In the absence of reliable dating, it is critical to perform serial scans at intervals of 2 to 3 weeks to accurately identify fetal growth restriction. Remember, it is the rate of growth that is more important than absolute value at a given time. If the fetus is in the lower centiles but continues to grow within these centiles, it is reassuring. But if growth is slow and the fetus falls into lower centiles, this is a cause for concern. Placental morphology may also help in detection of IUGR. Acceleration of placental maturation may occur with intrauterine growth restriction. Amniotic fluid volume, fetal breathing movements and urine output are also helpful in diagnosis. Type 2 IUGR is usually associated with oligohyramnios. It is also important to rule out congenital anomalies of the fetus in early onset symmetrical IUGR. I will now discuss the role of multivessel Doppler velocimetry in the diagnosis of IUGR. In pregnancies at risk for IUGR, Doppler analysis is essential to evaluate placental disease and fetal compromise and may improve fetal and neonatal outcomes. Umbilical artery Doppler plays an important role in detection and management of IUGR. Normal umbilical artery Doppler flow that is SD ratio less than 3 is reassuring and rarely associated with significant morbidity. Absence of end diastolic blood flow in the umbilical artery is indicative of fetal hypoxia. Reversal of flow that is negative SD ratio is suggestive of worsening fetal status and impending demise. Middle cerebral artery Doppler is also helpful in diagnosis. A normal fetus has relatively little blood flow during diastole. Increased resistance to blood flow in placenta results in redistribution of cardiac output to favor cardiac and cerebral circulations, resulting in increased flow in the diastolic phase with decreased SD ratio. MCA PI and umbilical artery PI ratio is more sensitive predictor than either MCA or umbilical artery velocimetry alone to detect redistribution of blood flow. Cutoff values below 1 or 1.1 are considered to be diagnostic of brain sparing effect. Remember, in more common late onset IUGR, the uterine and umbilical artery Doppler studies are mostly normal. However, late onset IUGR babies may have abnormal middle cerebral artery Doppler and or very mature grade 3 placentas. This is the end of part 2 of my e-lecture on IUGR. Please click here to see part 3. For further reading on this topic and other topics in obstetrics and gynecology, refer to following books written by me. Practical Obstetrics and Gynecology Modern Obstetrics Modern Gynecology Clinical Cases in Obstetrics Questions and Answers Clinical Cases in Gynecology Questions and Answers and Pelvic Reconstructive Surgery If you have found this video useful and informative, please subscribe to my YouTube channel by clicking here.